Hey guys, Brickney here and welcome back to another review video. Today I'm going to be taking a look at one of my favourite hidden side sets and it's not from the third wave, it's actually from the second wave, which is the Shrimp Shack Attack. This is absolutely brilliant and because I've been playing the game a lot recently, I've noticed that not a lot of people have this. This game doesn't seem to appear on this one, so I'm wondering why people didn't buy this set. So I thought let's take a deeper dive into the set and why it's one of my favourite hidden side sets that have come out. Okay, so quickly just taking a look at the set details, it is 579 pieces and it contains five awesome minifigures. It has a recommended retail price of £44.99 in the UK, or $49.99 in America, or €48.73 in Europe. Bit of a weird pricing there. Uh, which gives it a price of piece of 7.8p in the UK, or 86 cents in America, or 84 cents in Europe. So pretty good price piecing, I think, for this. Obviously, it's not a licensed theme, so that's probably why the price of piece can be a little bit lower than the likes of like Star Wars or Harry Potter, but I think these are great. The thing that I originally didn't get into the hidden side was because I thought, oh, because it's an app, it's going to be more expensive. But when you actually dive into the sets, these are actually a lot cheaper than most other sets. Okay, so first things first, let's go on to the minifigures, and there's some great selection of minifigures here. So we'll start with the main character, who is Jack. I really like this character. He's got a white hoodie on. And the hoodie and the cap itself actually are one piece. You can take it off and it is dual molded. And he does have two facial expressions because the back is covered, which is quite nice. He has a frowny face and a happy face. So I think the frowny face is when he's serious fighting monsters and the happy face is for when he's not or he's just playing on his phone. He has some nice printing detail on his hoodie itself on the torso piece with black gloves on. And he has a hidden side game actually playing on the phones. So these are exclusive to these sets. Pretty nice to get a different type of phone compared to the standard ones that we're getting, so that's pretty nice. And then his trousers are black, but they do have printing, so he's got like a brown belt, which is really nice, and then dangling from his belt is actually a little dog bone, which might be a pooba scooper or dog treats or something like that. So next we have the female character. Now she is called Parker, I believe, although I'm not 100% on these hidden side characters, so let me know in the comments down below if I'm right on these characters' names. But I just love her double denim that she's rocking, definitely. 80s inspired, maybe like Stranger Things or something, pretty cool. But she actually has P necklace around um, her neck, which is quite cool, so I'm guessing it is Parker, I think I've got that right. And then she's got loads of little like embroidery patches and stuff on her denim and ripped trousers on the front. The yellow is not too great on that, but it kind of gets the point across, so I think that's pretty nice. She comes with a pink phone rocking the Hidden Side app as well, which is pretty nice. And she also has two faces, one frowny face again, probably a bit serious when she's battling the monsters. And then another face which is smiley as well. On the back she also has some more kind of patches and stuff with this pow and baseball and uh, what looks like a tiger or something as well which is pretty cool and then three stars. Her hair hat combination is also dual molded which gives it that really nice premium look and she's obviously rocking the purple hair as well which is pretty cool. Hair pieces on these and the hat piece are very very iconic to these characters which makes it a little bit harder to use for a city with those bits but you can definitely chop and change the rest of it I think and probably could use those on other characters as well as long as you've got a big city and space them around. So the middle character that I'll go through next is actually one that's kind of just like an odd one I think he's just basically a standard city kind of character. He has no printing on his trousers at all they're just this dark blue and he has a pizza t-shirt on which is quite nice but it's a bit strange that he's actually at a shrimp restaurant which he has a pizza and then he also is holding a hot dog which again is a bit strange because this is a pizza rest uh, this is a shrimp restaurant i'm guessing it's because they don't have a shrimp piece so maybe that's the reason but a little bit odd in my opinion and then he has a dual face which is one side is a happy expression which is quite cool and then the other side he's either stuffing his face or he's about to throw up so depends on whether you think the shrimp shack restaurant is actually a good one or not um <laughs> but it's pretty cool i like that face it's been used quite a lot actually, I hadn't realised how often that had been used, this is the first set I got with that face, but it's a really nice one to, to see, so I really do like that one. And then it has the kind of, the standard ginger mopped hair, which is what my actual sig fig used to have as well, so pretty cool minifig nonetheless. And then comes up to the two that actually run the restaurant, and these guys are actually the uh, ones that can be turned into ghosts or monsters or whatever you want to call it as well. So we'll start with the chef. The chef's pretty cool, I really like his outfit, he's got a white torso with then this green printing over the top which is really really nice and then he's got a 
kind of um, beige nougat trousers. With, it actually has a green belt across it, the green torso uh, bit, which is quite nice, which gives it that nice little details around the edges. Uh, other than that, pretty plain on the back, not much to show. Um, and he doesn't have a dual facial expression either because he has a hat on. So the hat, it would obviously be very visible from the back. He also comes with this big kitchen knife, but there are actually a couple of these in the set as well, so you can kind of mix and match. And that's because this guy, when you actually evolve him, I should call it, into the ghost, he actually has an entire half torso piece that goes on top. So you remove his head and put on the torso piece. And he kind of looks like something like Garmadon, which is pretty cool. It's the same Garmadon piece, I believe, from the, uh, the Ninjago sets. And then you put his hat on top of that character. And then he has this kind of green, limey green kind of look to him. And it comes with this green meat cleaver as well, which is pretty cool. So that's why they've given him a lot more um, knives and things. You can probably have something filling each of his hands if you wanted to. The pans and the knives and everything that comes with this set. Then he has one of the standard kind of green day glow green kind of uh, luminescent faces with print on the front and back which is very nice and then the hat just goes on top so overall pretty cool quite like what they did with that character so the next character that can also be turned into a kind of monster ghost is the waitress so let's look at her before the accessory she has is really really nice it's actually just an anti-stud uh, circle tile which you can then put a mug on, which I think is really nice. They haven't used that in other sets before, and I think this is a great, I think this is the best kind of use of a tray, in my opinion. She has this really nice pale green outfit on, which looks really cool. Again, the legs don't look too great on the printing. The yellow doesn't quite look the right yellow color, but I forgive it because it's a nice minifig. She also has a necklace on, which is this kind of half moon on it. She's got pink accents around all of her actual clothes. It's really nice, and she has a name tag, which you can't quite read what her name is. But really nice. She also has nice pre printed detailing on the back of her torso as well, which is really, really cool. She has a blonde hair piece, which is, I think, is the same one from the Series 19 Coda, which is nice to see. And she also has a dual face expression. So one's this kind of side, she's a bit fed up of work kind of look. And then the other one is a scared one. So obviously when the monsters attack or if she, you know, if she hasn't been turned into a monster herself. So like I said, you can actually remove her head as well and her hair piece. And she has a luminescent face as well, but it is a different print to the other guy's one. More of a kind of aggressive looking one. And then she has this really weird mop hair, which kind of goes just over the eyes, which is quite interesting. Really cool. It's like painted on top of the luminescent green to give this really kind of gross, gunky kind of look. But it does work really well. I probably won't use any of these headpieces unless I find somewhere cool to use them. Like I did actually make a hidden side ghost mock through the day so maybe i might use these in the future but all in all pretty cool to get them in the pack okay so that's the minifigures out of the way so let's look into the set itself so before we get into the actual shack itself it also comes with this really cool hidden side buggy so i'll show that on this camera over here as you can see the buggy's really really cool it's actually made i believe this bit is also the same piece that's used in the ghost the recent ghost house cable car which gives it this nice look and you can put two people in it quite easily then it has this built gun here. It looks like kind of like a laser, 80s laser gun or something. This set's obviously 80s inspired. Then you've got these nice kind of stickers here, as well as some stickers detailing on the side over here as well, just to give it that little extra pop. And it's got just a single headlamp and a ball bar at the front, and then these really big, chunky tires. I think this is really cool. I think you can actually easily take the gun off and just use this as kind of like a buggy, modify this a little bit and have it as like a beach buggy or something if you wanted to. But I think this is really cool. I've actually used this in the city as this is kind of a hidden Easter egg of it being a hidden side is in the actual area. So I think this is quite a nice little set to get added to it. Okay, so let's go into the actual shrimp shack itself. So I'll put this over here on this camera so you can get a better view. Okay, so going around the set, as you can see at the front, these are some really nice sticker applications here. Really, really cool. This is a sticker as well with the fresh seafood sticker put here and then it's got a 3d sign of using a crab which is really nice nice use of sand coloring here as well at the bottom i think that's really cool then over here you have a life preserver on a kind of hook this nice yellow one which is pretty cool nice little bit of like a rundown area with this tree hanging out and stuff which has steps leading up until i think this is supposed to be like an eating area if you want with these as kind of tables if you want to use them this one here actually has a hidden feature that you spin around, and I'll show you that on the other side of what that does afterwards. And then also around the back, I'll show you there is a box here as well containing little bits. 
Uh, we also have this vent here, which is obviously where all the steam from the actual shrimp shack gets taken out. Here you have the actual uh, built shrimp here, which can pull out like that to show off the hidden side bit. And this here is already flipped, but this is a 24 hours open and you spin it around to show the evil eye. And that's kind of how that looks. And then you also have printed diner here as well. Uh, sorry, not printed, a sticker of the diner here as well. This also pulls out, so all the hidden side stuff's over here. And as you can see, it's kind of got this weird tooth tongue kind of look to it. And then there's actually a little twisty gear here behind, which opens up where it eats people down here, which is obviously another table with a drink on top. And then we also get this really nice kind of cool, I think it's supposed to be like a drinks machine outside or something. Pretty cool nonetheless though. So I'll put all that back so it's the non-hidden side version. And then I'll spin it around and show you the insides. Okay, so inside the shack you have lots of nice little details. There's a cooker here. Uh, this bit can actually open, which is like another kind of cookery area. You've got a coffee machine, some nice bits over here. I think this is really nicely displayed. And you can also open the front latches here to actually open up the restaurant. And this is my first complaint of this set, which is this is what I was saying, twizzle around to kind of open that, which is where you scan it in the game to reveal like a secret character or something. But this to me is really, that gets in the way, this bar, because actually that's where someone would probably be serving customers. And I just think it looks really, really ugly for kind of this setup. So I usually, I remove this when I put it in my city. I don't have that there at all. Because actually another annoying thing is, is that this is the bit here where you spin to change what's happening in the game, where you want need to look for red, uh, ghosts in the red spectrum or in the blue spectrum and things. And that's actually hard to use with your hand when you're kind of playing the game. So I think they should have done that on this instead, which would have made the game playability a lot easier to do that. And that would have then allowed this to be more acceptable in my opinion, because it would have been at least a bigger play feature to the actual game. But there's lots of details over here. We have the saucepans on the side here. Like I said, this is a nice printed piece here of a uh, one by four kind of dial. You've got some spoons, the coffee machines, pretty cool. Another clip here that you can add something else if you want to. And then this was the ba uh, the box that I was on about before, and it contains some nice little detailed things. It's got a fish, an egg, and a, <laughs> what looks like, oh, it's a couple of fishes, an egg, and a chicken drumstick as well, which is pretty strange, but some nice pieces there if you don't want to use them there and actually leave them there, because it's a bit weird choice for them to be there, to be honest. Okay, so as well as all of these characters as well, you also get the little dog, Spencer. He's quite a nice little character to have in the set. He's in a lot of these sets though, so I don't really rate him as a minifigure or anything, but he's a nice piece to have, along with all the kind of pieces that you're getting in the back and stuff. So overall, I really, really like this set. With it being a hidden side set as well, they usually drop down. I think I managed to pick this up for like 30 pounds when I got it, which is an absolute bargain for this set. I think it's great. So what I will do with the set is actually not have it as a hidden side set. I love the game. Not a lot of people play this level though on the game, which is a bit bizarre, but I think it's because this makes a great city shop. You can easily take this off, remove all of this stuff on the sides of things, and it's a great little actual shrimp shack, which is what originally interested me to this set. Um, I think if you want to play the game and stuff, and if you guys are into the game, I would definitely recommend getting something like the buggy or something, which is really easy to pick up play the game around the little buggy and then you can put it away. Whereas with these, because I want to kind of modify it and turn it into something, I find it very hard to do that and then be able to take this out of the city and play with it, which is why I don't feel the app is the greatest for this level. And I think that's why probably a lot of people don't play this level app. The Haunted House had the kind of same thing, the Haunted High School, sorry, had the same kind of issue where it was so big to get it out and move around the table and things made it very hard to play the game at the same time. So um, yeah, I found I find the smaller sets for the hidden side game actually better but that's my review of this set hope you enjoyed it please let me know your thoughts of this in the comments down below and hopefully you like this new setup style as well in my new room so let me know if you're enjoying these videos they're a bit different not the standard generic white backgrounds or anything anymore kind of got more of a nice warm glow feel to these videos so hopefully you like that but let me know but other than that i'll catch you in the next one if you enjoyed the vid, then if you haven't already, please like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. And as always, keep pricking it.